And we are here now with the man that we just discussed, Brian Muir, designer extraordinaire. Uh, Mr. Muir, thank you so much for being with us. It's truly an honor to have you on it's our real set. Real pleasure. Yeah. Really appreciate it. So I understand back at the age of 16 years old, you started your apprenticeship in woodworking sculpture at Elstree Studios. Can you kind of just talk about how you got into all that? What inspired you? Well, I, I got into art in uh, school and found out at the age of 13 that I could actually draw and paint a bit. So I wanted to go into the art field, but didn't think I had a chance of getting in anywhere. And when I was 16, my mother knew someone down the youth employment and she phoned her and said, well, funny enough, there's an apprenticeship going at the Elstree Studios at the moment. And she said it was a model maker. So I thought I was going to maybe go in and do small models. Like mild cars and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, she said, but don't get too excited. They've turned down 12 people already. So I, I went in and I took my drawings and paintings and a little sculpture that I'd done. And uh, I got on pretty well. And a week later, the letter dropped on the uh, mat saying that yeah, I got the apprenticeship. Um, and I would be starting in a couple of months. So I, I was so lucky because being in the right place at the right time, I was the only apprentice ever in the film industry and I had a fantastic start um, in the way that I was taught from the old guy that I trained under. Yeah, and so is it my understanding, uh, so the apprenticeship came and then what came immediately after? Was it Star Wars or was it working with your government and the Queen and um, those works. What came, what was the timeline there? Well, immediately after the apprenticeship, um, I went outside. I was doing prestigious work all over London. At the age of 20, I had a, a plaque for the Stock Exchange, exchange unveiled by the, beautiful. by the Queen. Yeah. And then I did 39 Scottish Shields forever but borough in Scotland. That was unveiled by the Queen Mother. And I did uh, work for the House of Commons and you know, places all around London that will be there for hundreds of years. Absolutely. And it's me, Paul, but it, and after that, I believe, I know, uh, I read a quote somewhere saying that you, you had a steady job in, in that work and suddenly you were contacted to go to maybe check out a small film and maybe <laughs> make some designs. Uh, and it turned into, obviously, Star Wars. So... Is that a true story where it was a short job turning into... It, it is. I mean, I was young. Yeah. Uh, they really didn't know what I could do. And they just said to me, oh, there's only six weeks work here. So, you know, I mean, we don't know if you'll be on it longer. Sure. But when they, I got on there and they could see what I could do, uh, I started with the Stormtrooper armor. Um, then I went on to do Vader. They said, uh, go down and see John Mollo. He's got uh, another character for you to start on. And I went down there and he showed me a simple little sketch of uh, the Vader mask and helmet from one angle. Yeah. No shading, no sense of form. And uh, that's all I had to work for, from. I used Ralph McQuarrie's um, artwork for the chest armor, shoulder bells and shins. But it was that simple little drawing that I actually did the mask and helmet from. Yeah, that must be crazy. Ralph McQuarrie is a a master and has you know children now in the industry as well so working off his yes. work I imagine must have been just mind-blowing for you yeah I think I mean it was um, uh, Ralph McQuarrie's concept art that yeah. played a big part in the film never getting made sure I, I think it sold it to uh, 20th Century Fox who put yeah. the money up and it was always a tight budget so yeah. I mean I had to do all the hours God sends I worked 76 days without a day off at one point wow. Because uh, Liz Moore, that sculpted um, C-3PO, sure. then she left the picture and I did all the finishing work oh, on wow. it and the hands and did small changes. So um, it just started with kind of one thing and there's just more and more and more to what, you know, Yeah, they I mean, after, after Vader, I went on to do the Death Star droid CZ-3 and they were the last two characters uh, I did. So yeah. kind of going into more of like your... Um, the whole industry, what's kind of changed from when you first started up until nowadays when you're working on some of the new stuff, when you have, you know, green screens and blue screens and all that stuff that you can make sets like that? Uh, yeah, you've got all that and CGI. Um, I mean, I'm often asked the question, what do I think of CGI? And I, I'd say it, I think it's great because what it does, it makes them so more ambitious about what they can actually do. Because 
they actually build up to a level um, so that the actors have got something to, to you know, react to and they have props and everything else. But you can extend that right up to whatever height you want to go. Right. So it's almost benefiting with your job with the sculpting now that you have like the, the like I said the green screens to go with like your set pieces and stuff like that. It's like it's almost you know just better for your job actually. Well, yeah. I mean, sim I mean, simple things like um, one of the Star Wars film that, that, that I was on, the whole spaceship was CGI'd apart from the legs <laughs> because the actors run down the ramp and they right, run next yeah. to the legs, so they had to be sculpted. So I just sculpted them and. Uh, <laughs> Like Guardians of the Galaxy, the uh, I think it's the Necrocraft, yeah. the organic one. Mm -hmm. There was a team of us. We sculpted the whole back of it because an actor was running out of it. Oh wow! Oh, wow. And then the rest of it was CGI'd apart from the cockpit uh, cockpit seat, which I sculpted, and the, the front glass I sculpted stuff on that. But most of it was CGI'd, and most you know the flying that yeah. all is. So, yeah, I mean, it gives them far more scope as to what can be done. Uh, let's get right back into it. I'm curious, you've worked with uh, many, you know, Ralph McQuarrie was a guy we mentioned. I mean, he's a legend in terms of concept art and the artistry of that. But, and obviously, you are a legend in your own right. You may not say it yourself, but we can, say it, but we can you. say it for you. Uh, in, in your mind, who is the most talented artist you've ever worked with on any medium? If you could pull someone out and tell us about them. It's very difficult. I mean, there are people like Giga. I, you know, quite respected him because I worked on the first Alien film, and um, another sculptor, Peter Voice, in me sculpted the um, the space jockey, which is quite a recognised piece. I actually, oh, just watched that for the first time yeah. the other day. That it's movie. legendary. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Giga. Th th there are so many talented people that have come through the film industry. Other sculptors, um, you know, that are talented. It's just that I was lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time and do Vader. And, but, and I've done a lot of other um, um, sculpts that people would recognize and sure. know quite well from the films I've worked on. Yeah, and I think we'll talk about, I think you want to talk about yeah, it Yeah, so uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I watched the Indiana Jones movie and that scene where he rips out the heart and he shows that heart, that freaked me out. I still think about that. And that just <laughs> makes me think of some of the memories of you know that stuff and how you know you brought joy to like, my movie experience. So I just need to know, working on all these sets, all these great movies, what is your favorite memory or story on a set that you can share with us? There are many, but I, as we talked about the heart, yeah, um, they wanted to, me to sculpt the heart and I had a plastic heart that they have in hospitals just so I could see the veins come off at the right place. But they said to me, would you, would you go and see a heart specialist at the Harefield Heart Hospital to just to talk to him and see what's the best heart you can get? So I was sitting talking to him and I was saying, what's the bet? He said, the primates. I said, no, I can't get a monkey's heart. Well, what about <laughs> sheep or pigs or whatever, that sort of thing? What's the best? He's closest. And he said, well, a sheep's heart is quite close. So they got one of the uh, sheep's heart in and I used all the detail on that to put on the heart that I did and used the plastic model so that the veins come off in the right place. Oh, wow. And then the special effects did the double pump action. So Such you detail. got the boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> but it was quite realistic. It yeah. really was. Yeah. That definitely freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so I, I'm curious. Um, obviously, uh, you did mention to us off screen that, uh, and we were, I was instantly sad to hear this, but that you have retired from the film industry. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. I retired and moved away from uh, the London area last November. We're now living a quiet life in the country in an old uh, barn conversion, and uh, we love it. Yeah, so as we kind of close things up here, what's a day-to-day -day like? What's a day like for you now that uh, the film industry is behind you? Uh, well, being in, like uh, we're in a different place, mm -hmm. I've been doing the house, doing the garden. The old lady that lived there, she, she'd let the garden go a bit. Yeah, so you so, got some work there to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, uh, we can't thank you enough for being here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, it's been your a time. Pleasure. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. And once again, we have Brian Muir here, the sculptor of Darth Vader and sculptor of so much more. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.